my name is James Newman. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the calc throughput function in Salonis's PQL language. We're here in our fraud data set, and I've got a table here that has this total throughput time calculation here in days. How I did that is very simple, which is great. You just add, go to standard process API and click total throughput time in days. You got it here. So what you see here is that it's got from two activities. What I really like about this function, it lets you measure time across all the cases between two activities. And it'll automatically detect which cases have those activities. It'll blank out those cases which don't have that activity, which could screw the data set. All those types of things are really helpful when doing a calculation on end-to-end -end cycle time. So you first off, you'll see that this is from all occurrence process start to all occurrence process end. And it's also in days. So the second parameter here is remapping it to days. You can change that to hours, seconds, minutes, up to you. All occurrence process start, process start and process end are defined by Salonis to be the first activity and the last activity of the case. Um, this will kind of be end-to-end -end throughput time. There are certain edge cases like what if a case is not completed yet, things like that. So you can modify these to be for particular activities. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to grab the process explorer, we're going to look at it and choose two activities to, choose to def get the time between. So I go in here, do average time. And so from fraud alert detected to alert created is zero days. We want to show that in hours, so it's two hours. So let's recreate that time in a single number component. We're going to name this detection to creation time. We're going to input in total throughput time in days, like I said earlier. Modify this just a little bit so it's a little easier to read for you. And then what we're going to do is we want, so all occurrence is just for process start, process end. So we're going to do first occurrence, which is the first time that an activity happens in the case. And process start is going to be fraud alert detected. And then this is going to be the last occurrence. If there's multiple alerts per case, it could be that this is first. Refresh that. And so this is a good kind of learning moment. We got a warning here that said the alert creation could not be found. So this activity does not exist. Um, so what happened was that it's actually alert created, not alert creation. So this kind of spelling is really important to make sure that you're referring the right thing and you won't get the errors. So sometimes we've seen uh, Salesforce will let you have different stage names defined by users. Um, so this could be maybe if you land into a specific environment and your throughput time is not working, it could be because the activity that you have is defined slightly different by this client slightly different in your source system. Um, so these are the type of things to know. So we got 0 0.08. Um, you'll note that we're still in days. So we need to change that to hours. And then once we refresh that, we get 1.93, which with rounded would match two hours. So this is kind of an overview of how to use calc throughput. Um, you can do some cool things. You can instead of the strings to use the activities, you can use variables uh, to be set in drop downs. Check out, check out our variable video to see kind of a idea of how that works. Um, and you can play around with that to get really good throughput time analyses. Hope this was helpful. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thank you.